All right, so I'm back. We're going to talk about the quotient rule for derivatives. I just wanted to warn you that this one can be a little difficult for students, so hopefully you're going to memorize um, my voice saying the steps and take your time as you work through examples. The algebra can be a difficult one. So let's get started. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not really in love with this slide. This is the book's definition. Um, basically, it looks very confusing as I look at it right behind you. And so I'm going to go on to the next slide. I want you to look over this, though, and we'll go on to the next slide, and I'll show you how to do it. This is the part where if we were in class, I would have you all say this several times to get it in your memory. So hopefully hearing me say it several times will help get it in your memory. So here we go. And so in words, it says the derivative of the quotient of two functions is the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom squared. So let's look at that in words. So say you have y equals and you have a function f over g. Okay, so you have two functions. You have a function on the top and a function on the bottom. If you want to find the derivative, here is what it is not. And this is what a lot of people do, so be careful about doing this. They want to say that the derivative is, so the derivative is the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. That's what they want to say the derivative is. Um, that is a pretty common error, and that is not true. So let's look at what it is, okay? So for the derivative, dy dx, it is literally take the bottom function, write it, multiply by the derivative of the top function, minus the top function, multiply by the derivative of the bottom, all over the squared. That is what it is. Um, I'm going to write it out in words, So, but if you, I want you to look at it. Um, look and notice that you have one function times the derivative of the other minus the other function times the derivative of the first one. This is very similar to the product rule on the top, except for where the minus goes is very important. So here's the part that I normally would have had you say out loud in class, um, and I'm going to write it out in words. So the derivative is the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom function squared. So the bottom function multiplied by the derivative of the top minus the top function multiplied by the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom function squared. So add that to your notes. And that says derivative. Horrible writing. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Again, this is another explanation or um, put it in words type of slide. Okay, this is our very first example, so I'm going to go over it again. It's bottom function first multiplied by the derivative of the top minus the top function multiplied by the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let's dive in. So derivative, we have bottom function. 2x plus 5 multiplied by the derivative of the top, and the derivative of 3x is 3, minus the top function, 3x, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of 2x plus 5 is 2, and all of that is over the bottom function squared. So that is your derivative, guys. Now, if this was not, if this was a test situation, I would say leave it alone, especially if it's a written test. 
If it's a mind math lab, you're probably going to have to simplify it. And um, if it's an exit ticket, I would say leave it alone too. But if it's a mind math lab problem, I would try to enter it as it is. And if they don't like it, then I would simplify it. So let's simplify it just for the algebra. So we would multiply 2x times 3 and get 6x, 5 times 3 and get 15, and then minus 3x times 2 minus 6x all over. Leave the bottom alone. Never multiply that out. That would be crazy. And if my math lab makes you multiply it out, let me know. And so then these cancel, and you get 15 over 2x plus 5 quantity squared. There's our answer. Not too bad. Okay, this is our second example, and it is going to be a little bit more difficult as far as the algebra. So let's go back over. So we have bottom function, which is x cubed plus 6, times the derivative of the top, which is 2x plus 1. Because the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 1x is 1, and the derivative of 2 is 0 minus the top function, which is x squared plus x minus 2, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is 3x squared. Because the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of 6 is 0, and I'm not even going to write the 0. OK. And looking back on this, be very careful about one thing. Notice how I did the top function. When I did the top function, I did it in parentheses, and then I did the derivative of the parentheses, and then minus the top function in parentheses and the derivative of the bottom. So notice that I used the parentheses. The parentheses will matter in certain cases, and you're going to mess up if you're not careful. So be careful about that. And all of this is over what? The bottom function squared. So bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now in, if my math lab will take this, put it in like that. If not, we're going to have to simplify this. So I have x cubed times 2x, so 2x to the fourth. I have 1 times x cubed, so 1x cubed. I have 6 times 2x, so 12x and 6 times 1, 6. And then I have minus x squared times 3x squared, so minus 3x to the fourth, minus x times um, 3x squared, so minus 3x to the third, and minus 3x squared times minus 2 is a positive 6x squared, all over the bottom squared. I'm going to leave that alone. So let's simplify this. And the 2x to the fourth and the negative 3x to the, oh wait, 2x to the fourth and the negative 3x to the fourth will combine and give me negative 1x to the fourth. So that and that. And then I have 1x cubed minus 3x cubed will be minus. 2x cubed, and then I have a plus 6x squared right there, and a plus 12x, and a plus 6, all over this mess, which is x cubed plus 6 squared. Whew. Okay, done with that one. Okay, for this one, what I want you to do is I want you to stop the video, and I want you to try this one on your own, and I want you to completely simplify it if possible. So stop the video, try it on your own, and then check your answer. So I'm going to pause for you to do that. Okay, hopefully you actually stopped and tried it. So here we go. We have bottom function times the derivative of the top minus top function. Notice my parentheses times the derivative of the bottom, all over bottom squared, which will equal, if I simplify this, 6x plus 3 minus 6x plus 5 
plus 2 all over that mess. And these cancel, and I get my final answer should be 5 over 2x plus 1 quantity squared. Hopefully you did it on your own. Okay, again, try it on your own. Try it without simplifying it. Just try the first step. Um, it doesn't hurt to try. Nobody's there looking over your shoulder. So just try the first step. So pause the video, try it, and then compare with me. Hmm. So I have bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. Hopefully that worked. Hopefully you got that first step. So check and see where your errors are and let me know um, if you need any further help, like if you're consistently making an error and I can look at your notes. Okay, so let's look at this one. Honestly, this one can be done two different ways. You can use the power rule on this one, or you can do it as a quotient rule. So I'm gonna show you both, and I want you to be very careful because remember, um, a derivative is the slope of a line. And if a line is horizontal, okay, so like y equals two, the derivative of that is zero because it has zero slope. So let's look at this one in two different ways. Um, so you can make sure and not be tripped up by this. Okay, so one way is to look at j of x is equal to 2, and then x squared plus 3x would be to the negative 1 power, because technically all of that is to the 1 power. And um, then you could use the power rule on it. But you also have to know the chain rule to do that. And unless you've had calculus before, you don't know the chain rule yet. That's going to be next week. So we're going to have to use for right now um, the quotient rule. So we can't do this one yet. Going to have to wait on that. So back to ours. So j prime of x derivative is bottom function x squared plus 3x times the derivative of the top function. Well, 2 is a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0, because the slope is 0, and that's what a derivative is, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom function So then when I simplify this, this is super easy to simplify because this becomes zero, because zero times anything is zero. And we have minus two times two x plus three. You multiply that off or leave it over x squared plus three x squared. And if you want to multiply that out, it would be negative four x and minus six over x squared plus three x quantity squared. Okay, so again, if you know um, if you know the chain rule, you could have done it with the power, bring the power down, but since we don't, we have to use quotient rule. Okay guys, this is our last example. Um, full disclosure on this, this is a tough one. Um, you're going to have an exit ticket very similar to this, but much easier. So keep in mind, um, this is about as bad as it can get. So let's dive into it. You can do it. You can do it with my help. You can do it without my help. Okay. The only part that makes this one nasty, to be honest, is the fractions. So let's get into it. So we have to find a tangent line to a function at the point. So over here, I'm going to have my tangent line. Now, what two things do we need for the tangent line? Well, we need the point, 1 comma whatever, f of 1. And we need the slope, which is the derivative evaluated at 1. So we need those two things. So first, I'm going to find f of 1 over here. f of 1 is 1 minus 6 over 1 squared plus 3, 
which is negative 5 over 4. So negative 5 fourths. So our tangent line has the point 1 comma negative 5 fourths. And our slope, we still don't know. So to find our slope, we need to find the derivative. So we need to find f prime of x, which is the quotient rule. So we have bottom function times the derivative at the top minus the top function, put all of that in parentheses, times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Okay, now, I'm not simplifying this because it doesn't say I have to, and I might mess up on the algebra, and there is no point in messing up. So right now, I'm going to find the slope at 1. So I have 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 1 minus 6 times 2 times 1, all over 1 squared plus 3 squared. So that becomes 4 minus negative 5 times 2 all over 4 squared, which is going to be 4 plus 10 over 16. So it's going to be 14 sixteenths, which is, if I simplify that, divide by 2, what, 7 eighths? So my slope over here is 7 eighths. So now let's find our tangent line. y minus our y value equals our slope x minus our x value. So y plus 5 eighths, 5 fourths, just joking, equals 7 eighths x minus 7 eighths. So y equals 7 eighths x minus 7 eighths minus 5 fourths. Okay, side note, 5 fourths is equivalent to 10 eighths, right? If I multiply by 2, top and bottom, times 2, times 2. So now, back over here, I have y equals 7 eighths x minus 7 eighths minus 10 eighths. So my final answer is y equals 7 eighths x minus 17 eighths. And that is my tangent line. So that is my answer on this. Ugh, a lot of fractions. You just got to take your time and be careful. Be very, 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 very careful, especially on any little part. Okay, I want you to look over this table of differentiation formulas and note all the ones that we've learned. We've learned the derivative of a constant is zero. We've learned that when you have a constant times a function, you bring it down. We've learned um, the power rule that if you have x to some variable, you bring down that variable and the new power is less by one. We know the derivative of e to the x. We know the derivative of an exponential function. So we actually know the derivative of quite a bit of things. We also know the product rule, which is on there down at the bottom, and the quotient rule. So you have a lot of knowledge right now. Okay, guys, for this one, this is your exit ticket. I believe this is... Um, whatever one it is in Blackboard, exit ticket, maybe number 11. Um, and so for this one, you are going to do the same thing that we did in the last problem, except for you do not have to use the quotient rule. Um, it is just a straight derivative. And I would simplify this one to this. And that can help you. All right, good luck. And when you're finished, upload it to Blackboard. Okay, so your homework for this is seven problems that you can find on My Math Lab, and it's homework 14, the quotient rule for derivatives. Um, be careful on your simplification, and let me know if you have any issues. Good luck, guys.